Um, the thing is, is here's balance and then here's burnout and here's burnout and here's balance which one comes first, which one comes last, you know, burnout comes and then you get balanced or um, balance to prevent burnout. Um, we have to know several things in this section. So we have to know what balance is, our physical, mental, social, and emotional, spiritual balance. And then we're gonna talk about preventing burnout by our behavior. Um, and then how do we continue that behavior? That's that's always the tricky one, right? Um, how do we continue doing um, the behavior that keeps us out of burnout or trouble? And we have to kind of, we do have to, you know, um, define what burnout is. And so I'll definitely go over that. And then the coping skills at the end. Um, and this is not just for you, this is not just for your kids, it's not just for parenting, it's not for family, it, it's, it's just in general too, it can be any kind of burnout. So, so we have all these environments and, and I'm just gonna say that last week's um, time management class goes along with this a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. Um, because our, our balance is where we put our time, energy and money, which is our value system, which is we start with time. So this has to do with time management also sustained balance. So last week's was great. Um, and I think that's already on YouTube. If not, it will be on there soon, but you want to watch the time one. Cause I don't, so we don't have time to go over all the, how to, you know, calculate your time and how to get out of burnout and get into balance. It's time, you know, so time teaches you how to schedule, how to be proactive in, um, in what comes first and what's important to you and what's your value system. So, so that's a whole other thing. So just, I would encourage you to watch that one. Um, and there's handouts with that in the PowerPoint. If you need me to email you that, um, my email right here, carol at blumquistel.com. And then I'll send you those handouts. But, um, cause on YouTube, there's just a video, which is the PowerPoint with it too. So, um, so we're going to go through these three main points here. So, I would encourage you to get a piece of paper and pencil and write down some of these questions. So you can ask yourself, like really, what is your normal level of functioning? What's our normal, like, so when I kind of talk about statistics and stuff, it's about America. Europe, you know, European and other countries, I mean, they're different. We are different. So what's our normal level of functioning? Um, how much cortisol is in your body? You can test your stress hormones. Um, and I talk about the adrenal gland all the time. So if you want to look up adrenal gland stuff, that's really, really essential to look at if your adrenal gland is burned out. So that's a whole other class too. So stress response, it's like, so here's our adrenal gland. It sends cortisol to our body. It sends us to activate on something. It sends us to... Um, go into fight or flight, all that, that kind of stuff I've talked about before. So, and it is our immune system. It says right there, right? So here's the, the releasing of the hormones. Um, and this is the cycle, right? This is the cycle going this way and the cycle of that. So the brain sends that to, um, the adrenal gland and you produce cortisol. So that's the stress hormone. So it, but it restricts mood, memory, motivation, and management. So how can a stress hormone restrict mood and memory and motivation? Cause it kind of, cause it, that's kind of contradict, contradicting of, so if it, if it's, if it kills motivation or management of this, um, it's, it's because if you understand where the fight, flight, or freeze is, is in the midbrain, you just like, okay, cortisol, do something. So what happens is your frontal lobes up here that we've talked about quite a bit in my, in my classes. Um, this is where we reason and self-talk. And so our memory, yes, yeah, is clear back here. Our mood is up here, but when we're in cortisol stress response brain, we don't have the same self-talk and the motivation and, and we lose our, I mean, like you can have short-term memory. Um, and your mood is restricted. So because it hijacks, it's like, if you can imagine um, when your child is hijacked, it's like, if you can remember that, or when you're hijacked, 
when you get really angry, you're, you don't have the, the capability of making really reasonable decisions. That's why we have to get out of that as soon as possible and move into the other stage. But just ask yourself, what's your normal level of functioning? How much do you think your cortisol levels are up here? Um, are they are they managed? Do you bring them down during the day and then they go up, you know, with this stress? Do they go down and up and up, you know, um, you know, you don't really know that unless you really are testing yourself in that area. You can, you know, that you can tell how fast your heart rate is, how high your blood pressure is, um, and those kind of things. Um, so just a good question to review. So these are this is super important. This is just what we need to know about um, burnout. And a lot of people don't know these stages. Um, and let me explain what these are a little bit. Um, I don't really have it on here. It's just self-explanatory. But what I saw and what you will probably experience is because I can kind of predict behavior with how things go. And so it's like, okay. So I can predict behavior because we've gone through three of these stages already since COVID. So in March, we had a shutdown of everything. We are in a honeymoon stage of burnout. So we got to eat our, you know, cereal in our pajamas at noon and we, we got to work from home and everything was shut down and we didn't have to take our kids to 400 things in a week. And, you know, we got to have, you know, our, our, our schoolwork was done in our room. It was so fun and like all those kind of things. Right. So it was honeymoon. It was a honeymoon stage. So we didn't even realize it, but so what happened? We didn't have a routine. It was really frustrating. Um, we just kind of numbed out. We kind of honeymooned it. We're like, ah, it's fine. It's fine. We'll figure out school next month. We'll figure this out. We're just going to do the best we can. We're going to try. And then it got scrunched into onset of stress. And I saw my parents and everyone and it got into chronic stress because it was chronic stress at the end. So March, April, May. So May was like chronic stress because it was constant like, okay, am I going to fight my kid today about doing their Zoom, you know, teacher appointments or their homework or cleaning up the room or getting out of bed or, you know, I could go on and on, right? So you're all like, hopefully you're shaking your head going, yup, I, yep, yep, yep. Okay. And if not put, you know, let's do a chat and see how we are, <laughs> see where everybody's at. If I'm totally off then, um, but I see a lot of clients and, and in a lot of experiences and I, and there's a little poll that kind of went around on Facebook, my friend, and I thought, mm, I want to look at that. Like how many of you are completely A or B one or two 75, you know, completely done with school, burned out. I had most of my teachers that were clients say, yeah, I'm over it. I had a lot of teachers, you know, that were burned out with it. Um, a lot of parents and a lot of kids. So we did the best we could and we got through it and now we're into June. So this is this summer. So if we're in, we're not in honeymoon stage anymore because most of us in America, once again, kind of in general um, terms, we're in chronic stress all the time. So here's, and it's kind of a time thing. You can be in an onset of stress and you just have that, that, activator that stress that came on like it's a daily something or a weekly something and it was over um and then this chronic stress though just kind of bounces i think we kind of just bounce up and down in that chronic stress um and so you can look at the other side here and go okay what symptoms reactions am i having from burnout now if you've got most of these in most of these areas cognitive emotional behavioral and physiological, we're in definite burnout. We're not in chronic burnout anymore. We've now moved to burnout. So if we have most of these reactions daily, we are in burnout. We are in trouble. Your body and your mind can't go in consistent burnout. So habitual burnout is years. So there's some countries that stay in habitual burnout <laughs> a little more than others, but we we do bounce between those last three um 
in statistics. So it's like, you know, and if you can measure it, these are just the simple little burnout reactions. So these are attention and reducing and, you know, our short term memory problems and our judgment and spirit, racing thoughts and rigid thinking and focusing on the negative. Those are five of my thinking errors out of 10. So it's like, wow, cognitively, we're going to have lots of thinking errors. I love teaching that class. And then emotionally, are we going to be patient? No. Are we going to be, we're going to have a low mood. We're going to be anxious. We're going to have a lot more confusion and hopelessness and numbness. Now think of your kid O's, your kiddos or your spouse or your mom, or, you know, like think of people around you and do they display nervous habits and sleep disturbances and impaired listening. They're just not listening. Um, you know, the whole, I hear you. No, you don't. You're not listening. Oh, wait, wait, you're listening, but it should say impaired hearing. <laughs> so it's like, they've actually like have a hearing problem. You can listen to someone, but are you really hearing them? You know, are you withdrawing? Are you aggressive? Um, do you have aggression? That's that, that's that, you know, cortisol hormone just shooting through you all the time. If you're just a little aggressive, if you are irritable, right? So that's your, that's your emotional back up to the irritable, increased irritability. Um, like I've said, and I taught these classes and talked in groups, um, in my other substance abuse groups, it's like, we're a little irritable. There's road rage, there's domestic violence is up, abuse is up. I want to, you know, just be irritable. And it's like, and it's not anybody's fault. It's just, we're all like, wait, whose, whose fault is this? And who do we want to blame this on? Um, and our kids are doing the same thing. They have a lot of confusion in their emotional state. Um, so look at the behavioral. We're going to talk about sleep disturbances a lot because it's my, it's the, it's the, one of the biggest issues. And then here's physiological. You have a rapid heart rate. You have fatigue, illness, um, aches and pains, dizzy, breathing, decreased libido. I mean, that sounds like a heart attack. So it's like or a stroke, or a panic attack, a full-blown panic attack. So what is it? What's going on? I mean, our, so we have to rule out those things too, because this can be something else. The cognitive can be dementia, you know? I mean, the burnout reaction, are you burned out? Or are you having dementia symptoms? Um, are you having a heart attack? Or are you having a panic attack? Or you are burned out. You just had these consistent chronic stress burnout of dizziness and aches and illness and kind of, you know, you're fatigued. You are fatigued all the time. So, and headaches and difficulty breathing, right? So it's just kind of like, uh, I just, I just don't rest. I don't feel like I even get the right amount of rest. So that one's a big slide. Um, so just re recognize a little bit of what is going on there. And, and those are, um, just some of the symptoms, some of the reactions. Okay. So let's move here. We're moving to the next slide. Okay. So the balance. So you've seen this in my slides before. Super simple. It's where your time, energy, money goes. You have physical balance, mental, social, emotional, spiritual. So we're just going to start with physical. Once again, sleep, diet, and exercise. I'm not going over diet and exercise that much because sleep is the issue. It is the issue. Yes, we have a diet issue. I, I mean, my Burger King that I talk about does not have 15 cups of leafy vegetables and magnesium in it and all the nutrients that I need that I had, you know, my Whopper. No, it doesn't. So we have a diet issue, um, maybe, you know, but we, we're not getting the nutrients for our physical body and exercise. We know hands down. I mean, I just, I just am going to focus on one of those, which is sleep. Um, so, because if we're not sleeping, sleep is number one. If we're not sleeping, all of this balance does not work, honestly. And I will tell you how that works in these, in some of the statistics and, and what, and what REM sleep is, because we have to know what that is. Um, so, and this, and it's the toughest thing. I mean, tell me, chat to me, tell me that sleep is like, been the best thing you've ever that's one thing that you're in balance on i hope it is 
But in general, so many people do not sleep. And I have lots of kiddos, parents with kiddos that have serious, um, serious sleep issues with their kids, especially during this time and especially after the earthquake. So if anybody's having that and have had some ideas on how to get their kids sleeping better, um, please chat and we'll talk about it. Um, so balance. So like I said, this is, this is, this, these are the four um, components of balance, physical, mental, social, emotional, spiritual. So the thing is, is I made up this chart. It was in my time management class last week too, okay? Because this is so, I made this out because I was so tired of trying to explain several components of this. And it does come from a couple books, um, but self-discipline, just, I mean, just that concept and, and delaying gratification came from the road less travel. But this is my self-discipline lineup from that and explaining what delaying gratification is and then what a reward system is and what motivation is. Because a lot of parents are like, my kid's not motivated. I'm not motivated. Time management. How do we get balanced if we don't have time management? So first it's self-discipline. And that check mark on this slide, the first thing is balance. So in order to do this, you have to have self-discipline. Self-discipline is really tough. It's We're not even getting down the line to the reward system or the motivation because we can't get past self-discipline and balance. So we've got to know that that's where it starts. And then you have to have boundaries around that balance, around that self-discipline balance of physical, mental, social, right? So your physical boundaries, you've got to have boundaries for yourself. So you spend your time, energy, money, and then have a boundary around that. Self uh, delaying gratification, we just have to. It's managing impulses and self-control. Um, and then you have to have a reward system. And then that's when we have a reward system and it's scheduled, then we'll, we're motivated to do it again. So that's just this slide in here again, because it's so important to understand what self-discipline is. So if you want more information on that or kind of don't understand this lineup, um, shoot me an email and we'll talk or I'll send you this, you know, as a PDF. So, um, and the five R's are routine, you know, we have to have a routine. So that's the self-discipline. Responsibility and reassurance is, is what we have to continue to have those three words in the self-discipline part. And then in the delaying gratification, that's just delaying gratification and then reward schedule it. So those are my five R's and resiliency is just maintaining it and continuing it. So physical balance. First one, sleep, diet, exercise, like I said, sleep, even more important to sleep well to reduce burnout and depression. End of story. Diet. Of course, it's hard to have fresh vegetables, but family dinner is a must. So there's a little chart on family dinner. And of course, exercise, I'm not going to go over. It's right there. It says, you know, let's do it. It takes a toll on our immune system when we don't have it. There's movement apps for little kids that are fun. It sends all the good hormones to us. So we need to produce those to combat the cortisol. So starting with sleep, rapid eye movement. So if you haven't heard of REM sleep, you need to research a little bit. But here's the basic, um, what REM sleep is. It's stages in your sleep cycle. You need five to six REM cycles every single night. During that phase, the brain becomes active, you dream, you actually repair your body and your brain. And so I tell, I'm like, well, you're repairing your toxins in your brain when you have REM sleep and you have the right amount of cycles. So what happens when you go into a cycle? Because it says the first 90 minutes you start entering REM sleep. So what if you, you wake up two hours into falling asleep? Well, you've just now messed up your REM cycle. You have, it's going to take you another 60 minutes to get into that again sometimes. Okay. So we, when we wake up and have insomnia, we call it insomnia, but um, when we wake up and, and we, we can't fall asleep, number one, that's an issue. Or if we wake up in the middle of the night several times and can't go back to sleep, or we just wake up and we're woken up, 
um, that's interrupting these cycles. That is not good. So that's what that means. And since your brain um, is processing information from the day and everything during this time, it is so important um, to help your memory to have REM sleep. It helps your long-term memory, your short-term memory, but it's helping you process all of the information from the day. So that's why I call it your brain repairs its toxins from the day. So it's like, here's the day. We have 2.5 million intakes of stimuli every day, remember, from last week. But it's like, uh, I, I believe it's way more than that. We have so millions of, of, of little things that shoot into us every single day. And we're processing that. And if we don't sleep good, you know, if we don't have two days, two nights, I mean, of REM sleep, we have dementia symptoms. Now go back to the cognitive. You wanna go back to this cognitive attention span reduces short-term memory problems, judgment impaired, racing thoughts, rigid thinking, focus is on the negative. You're not focused, you can't focus and you don't have um, processing, processing. And so that's the same thing as dementia. Like, so if you think about it, it's like two, if we have two nights that we don't sleep good, you think you're gonna be not irritable, and you're going to process things and you're going to be able to have a conversation back and you're going to be able to focus through school. Heavens, no. It's, that's the thing. This is why this is so important. I can't get on my soapbox enough. <laughs> so a little bit about NREM sleep. It's just, it's a period where the sleep is made up of stages of one to four. So each stage can be five to 15 minutes. Um, stages two and three repeat. Um, during this sleep, the body repairs, regenerates tissue, builds bone and muscle. So that's the part where um, when I do some myths about sleep, um, it will, you know, bunk that. I call it, you know, debunk it, right? So people think that you lose muscle when you're sleeping. You actually don't. You gain muscle and build bones while you sleep. So um, and of course it improves your immune system at this point. Um, so people think that, so people under age of 30 have about two hours, um, of sleep every night where they're doing this. And, and while those over 65 might only get like 30 minutes. So, you know, there's a myth about 65 and up don't need as much sleep. That's a myth. They need the same amount of sleep. They just don't get as much of NREM sleep. Well, that's why their bones deteriorate, their muscles, right? Um, you, you don't repair as much after 65. Your immune system's lower, your, your muscle mass is lower, um, your tissue, you get, you know, yeah. You know, you get the wrinkles and, you know. So, um, okay, how much sleep is needed? So this is just a simple guide now I'm going to tell you right now, I read a study a couple years ago. It's, I know it's been a couple years, and I don't know where it was, and I didn't research it again, find it again. But Penn State came out with a study that because of all the stimuli, so say we have 2.5 stimuli, um, what do we want to call it? Stimu we're stimuli by 2.5 things every day. So because we have so much stimuli coming in that our, that our body takes in and our eyes and our our, our just our surroundings, our energy takes in. We they say they said that because of that, we are now at 8.5 hours of sleep needed for adults. So 8.5 hours. So this is seven to nine. I I mean eight hours is what you're shooting for for sure plus. So every night with REM. So the benefits of REM sleep. Better brain development, boost in memory, concentration, learning, mood, creativity. So there was one study that showed that as you wake up and you have had really good REM sleep and you've had five cycles of it at least, you have way more of a creative brain lights up. Your creative brain lights up way more than if the people that didn't. You seriously have creativity. And in my time management one of last week, we talked about what time of day you should be doing different tasks because of your brain. So if you're super, you know, in the morning, you're more creative. That's when we do things that are for creativity. You have a better immune system. You have less depression. That is hands down 
statistic repeats itself on that. Um, we have way less depression when we sleep. Uh, more growth hormones, improved blood supply to the muscles, talked about that, better all over overall health, reduced heart disease and strokes, definitely, hands down. So there's there's a couple, you know, statements that have been said, like, every day that you don't sleep, you take um, a day off your life, you know, like, it, your heart disease is just spiked when you don't get good sleep. Um, and actually, people that have REM sleep on average have a higher educational level. So they get there. Well, because they have better memory, you have better concentration, you have better mood, you have better creativity, you have better immune system, you have less depression, you have more growth, you know. You, so it makes sense to me. You actually have a higher educational level. People that just on average sleep. And there's like, wow, insomnia. It's a real thing. It's in the DSM. And we have lots of medications for it. So newborns, of course. Do you not want to be a newborn? This little child that's like falling asleep on her bread. I was like talking this morning about it. I was like, um, you know, when your kiddo like fell asleep in the high chair, because mine, mine are all past high chair stage. <laughs> but I mean, my grandkid that like, I mean, isn't it funny when they fall asleep in their high chair? Wow, right? But this kid is zonked out. So she, you know, preteen, she needs 10 hours of sleep for sure. So, and she's not getting it. So, um, an adult 79. So same thing. That's why I put 65 plus. They need the same amount of sleep. They don't need less or they don't need more. 65 plus, it's the same. So here's a little statistic on the bottom here. The American average is seven hours. Okay. That's reported. Um, but the problem is, is those people that get seven hours report that 35% of them report that they get poor quality of sleep. So they're not sleeping good. So really, if you want to see how you're sleeping, you get a $39 Fitbit. I tell people to go to Amazon and get a $39 Fitbit and slap it on your, you know, if you don't have a smartwatch or something, I mean, you, it is amazing how that records our heart rate. Um, it, it's amazing when you go into REM sleep, what your body actually produces and that Fitbit can record that. And it's like, whoa, that's, that's deep, you know, right? So school age kids, seven out of 10, do not get the eight to 10 hours, seven out of 10 kids. So not so good. So this is what I'm saying. Not good. Um, I just had to put this in here because I love socks on my feet. I always have socks on my feet. And when I'm sleeping, so it's like heating cold feet does a really awesome job at preparing you for sleep. It actually is scientific. So in fact, some research has shown that more um, of the, so when you, when you, your vessels expand, right, and your hands and feet get warmer, um, the less it, it takes, when that's happening, it takes you less time to fall asleep. Um, and I'm not going to brag about my, you know, but I am a very good sleeper. I always have. I've worked on that. I've always had a very good routine on that. Very good time management. I go to bed at the same time. I wake up at the same time, no matter what. It, and, and there is, you know, you can go to the sleep, and to the sleep.org. You can read about like, the problem is, is if you're waking up, um, if it's really hard for you to wake up at your alarm, you have, it's not good. If you're waking up right before your alarm, which I do, you know, you are um, on track. So you kind of keep track of your sleep. So once again, and we're going to talk about that in a minute, you've got to keep track of this stuff, just like your time, you got to keep track of it to see where it's going. So you know where to start. And, and that's the Fitbit will show that you've been disruptive 16 times. And one night I remember like my fit is like, it was like 16 times I was restless and I didn't sleep good that night. And I was tossing and turning and tossing and turning. And it showed 16 times that I'd done that. So yeah. You, and then what to do about that? Well, you just got to know first. So here's another little tip, a spoonful of almond butter. We're going to talk about magnesium. It's my favorite thing. I have a very high passion about some supplements that we are very low in. And so magnesium is one and the first and foremost thing to help with sleep. Do your own research. Talk to your doctor. Regular doctors will say, mm, yeah, take this, take that, or no, it doesn't work. 
do your own research. Um, I have an hour long video about a doctor and magnesium. She wrote a whole book just on magnesium. It runs 14 parts of our body. And if we're low in it, which is about 80% chance that you're very low in magnesium, you're not running your body. So we don't get magnesium from the soil anymore. I'm doing, doing a little soapbox right now. <laughs> we got time. Um, so what happens is that 15 cups of leafy vegetables we're supposed to have for lunch. Um, our soil doesn't have magnesium in it anymore very much. We're not drinking out of streams like <clears throat> 100 years ago. So we don't get magnesium and zinc and potassium and a lot of other minerals. So um, low levels of magnesium is 100% connected to insomnia. So it's important to get enough. So another, I'm going to go through some of those. Epsom salt is magnesium. So of course, having a bath of an Epsom salt at night is going to help that. Um, it's going to help your muscles. It's a natural muscle relaxer. There's a whole list of things in this one, you know, there's this one, the one I was talking about, the YouTube video that's easy to watch and it's, it's good. Um, you can read about it. You can look at the research. I have five or six um, studies in my office in Murray um, about magnesium and the combination of vitamin D3 and how people in two weeks slept so much better and their depression symptoms were reduced. So things like that, you know. So um so just a little tip on that in sleep because it's our diet um and let's go to the next one if i can get to the my buttons um okay bedtime routine to finish the day so do you think we've kind of lost i don't know maybe you've tried this um our bedtime routine this is blank for a minute because what is our normal bedtime routine once again tv zoning out, disconnecting, um, staying up late, eating late, I don't know. Or is it doing those regimens, um, you know, we brush our teeth, we do the stuff, we, you know, we wash our face. So here's this routine of all that kind of stuff. But are we adding the other part of the stuff to, to detox the day? We have got to detox our brain. We've got to detox the day. Once again, 2.5 stimuli, you know, going at us all the time. Is it positive right now or is it negative? There's so much negative coming at us. So we've got to, so if we have 2.5 negative um, thoughts and things thrown at us, um, what's the saying? We need like times 10 to, of positives. <laughs> so we're going to need lots of positive things to finish the day to actually detox the negativity. As Americans, we love to stay on the negative. That's just part of my thinking errors class because it's discounting the positive is one of the thinking errors. And we discount the positive a lot. So so it's like, uh, how do we detox the, the negative and just and and focus on the positive? I mean, if you if someone's got that down, um, I mean, the start of, you know, of course, there's lots of things that we've said, like. A lot of people say is like, don't watch the news. Don't, don't go into negative stuff as you finish the day. So sleep hygiene routine, stretch, um, electronics off an hour before bed, um, relaxation techniques. So this one, um, hyper sleep is on YouTube. It's what I, um, refer to my clients to do, uh, all the time because I'm training, I'm teaching people to train their brain to go to sleep. So you have to do that. You have to do that. So one of those things is just a, a five senses. So one of your five senses is hearing. You have to train your brain that you hear this and that means bedtime. So we forget our five senses in this. So hyper sleeps on YouTube. It runs, there's a dozen of them that you can choose and you just push play. And it will run for four hours. You know, some of them are an hour, some of them are, and it's it's not white noise, it's not, it's not music. It's just kind of to me, I call it just little brain waves. It's a little brain wave sound. So it's like here. And so the other tip is yes, fall asleep to that. But if you wake up in the middle of the night and it you've been awake for more than 20 minutes, you get out of your bed and you turn on hypersleep again. 
and you listen to that while you're reading or mind dumping or journaling and then you go back into your bed and you can turn it on again when you get back in your bed and fall asleep to it again you do that every single night and it does help um so you avoid the caffeine you reduce naps during the day of course so that's what i was talking about the 20 minute rule the 20 minute rule is get out of your bed the only thing we do in our bed and i'm gonna say it is sleep and have sex that's it our kiddos sleep nothing else i can't get on my soapbox and off about my soapbox so, so no homework no reading no nothing we have to train our brain that when we hit the pillow, it's just for sleep. So we don't have crucial conversations in bed. We don't read, do our homework, eat, watch TV. We really don't. Um, if you have a sleep issue, make sure this is, this is followed. So reading, that's outside your bed, journaling, outside your bed. And here's magnesium. So, so magnesium, that um, citrate calm. Calm is a, is a powder. These are different kinds of magnesium. You want to research it yourself. Make sure they don't upset the stomach. Um, they will. Um, you know, so calm is a, is a powder form. So you can put that in a, a chamomile tea and give it to your kiddos uh, before bed and for yourself. So questions to end the day. Um, what went well today? What are three things that I'm grateful for? Um, what did I do to, what, you know, how was I kind today? Um, how did I connect? And did I reduce stress or tension within myself? What did you do to reduce stress or tension? So you can remind yourself to do that again. Be like, wow, I was really stressed out and that really ticked me off. And so I went and did this. And then I calmed, breathed, did the, you know. And then what did I do to help the family reduce tension? which is cortisol, which is cortisol. It's a physiological thing. We have to calm the cortisol in our body to reduce tension and to get back to balance and to be able to sleep. Um, are, are there any changes that we need to make? So morning. So now we've got through the bad time stop and the balance, but here's a little morning thing. I stole this from um, my colleague that when he did the stress, um powerpoint so these two were really good i really liked them so wake up at the same time of course morning routine avoid setting upsetting news or emails stop looking at your stuff before you're even out of bed or or when you aren't on you know it's like so you start thinking about so you're not present so we're already starting the day with not being present if we're doing that um listen to something motivating and exercise hydrate so stretch high, morning's a great time to do that of course make your day great you get your planner out you look at what you need to do here's this okay this is what my top priority so back in the time management a b and c today's a i'm going to get you know this is a this is this is what's top priority in in quadrant one here's quadrant two okay these are these are b's for the day but A's have to be done, and I'm going to focus on that one thing at a time. Do not, what we're, we're finding with Zoom and stuff is we're, we're definitely multitasking again. Way, 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 way more, right? And do the best you can. We're all multitasking with our kids at home, and now it's like, oh, wait, we had summer. Wait, we're having summer again with our kids. So get dressed for the day. <laughs> I think it's kind of funny. I have to laugh at it. Like, put some pants on, get dressed for the day, you know. I only have earrings in now, like, once in a while. I get fully, you know, dressed. Okay, so back to the, some supplements for immune system and balance. Um, vitamin D3, C, zinc, magnesium. These are zinc, magnesium, and potassium. But um, B6 is your day vitamins. Um, apple cider vinegar and tumor these are all anti-inflammatory components because our immune system remember gets slammed when we send too much cortisol all the time through our body so our immune system is compromised these are all immune system additives so just look at that list um and research it yourself like i said 
uh, these are all anti-inflammatory, these are gonna all help with your immune system and your mood and your physical balance. Um, I can say that because it does. These are these are on my list for m the zinc, magnesium, vitamin D3, um, and B vitamins are on my list of mental health vitamins and supplements that help relieve this other mental health stuff. You know, to to long story short, and here and then it has a list of all the things we're supposed to eat to get these things. I'm telling you, we're not eating them, and then I'm telling you that the the ground that they're growing out of unless you grow a garden, um, you know, are not full of these things as much. I put Epsom salt actually in, around my plants in my garden. Um, I have two huge gardens. So it's like Epsom salt actually feeds the, I put it around my plants. There's a couple ways to do that. So now we're at thoughts and emotions. So mental. So we did our physical. Now we've got to do a little bit emotional balance so observe it label it and then be aware of it and then calm it so this is just my you've seen this before um if you've seen my webinars there's this the mindful cycle okay so mental so how do we get mental balance um and sometimes you know it's like i'm going to leave some time for some questions because i want some um interaction um, and questions. So how do we do that? How do we get mental balance? Like, so, so these are just some ideas of creative play activities. Of course, the opposite of mental balance is, is, is screen time. So we've got to limit it and we have to do avoidances less than two hours uh, or distractions for less than two hours because if we do it for more than two hours, it's an, now an avoidance. So if we're screen timing for more than two hours at a time, we have now caused the brain to avoid emotion, avoid sleep, avoid, you know, um, connection, avoid emotion. So what happens is this shuts down, just like we're impaired. It does the same thing almost as if we were impaired with alcohol, with burnout. So burnout, alcohol, and avoidances behaviors block the frontal lobes. So we're not in the, we're in the back of the brain. We, we're not, that's, it, it locks, it blocks logic and emotion. So another way to do mental balance is to have the timer as your boss. Now, creating a safe mental place. So a safe place in your head, in your body, in your physical, in your, in, in your soul, I don't care where it is, it's a safe place. So this is what you need to create some of that if you feel like you have a kiddo or yourself that doesn't have a safe place. So what happened when we are all sitting in front of the screen for eight hours a day working um, and our, our home became our work and some people are reporting that our safe place has been violated. Now, I don't want my clients in my house. I don't want to work, you know. And then I've had other women in the particularly say, I work outside the home for a reason. <laughs> like, right? And I'm pretty sure the men are saying that too. They're just not saying it that same way. So laugh with me for a minute. I work outside the home for a reason. <laughs> we work with our boss at work for a reason. We don't want to have a, a video of them in our house. Now I've had to get used to this. I'm doing, you know, eight hours of clients every day and teaching for eight hours, Monday through Friday. And I'm teaching in my other job and I'm doing groups of 30, 40, 50, you know, in that job too. And it's like, wait, I didn't, you know, I wanted to see them at work and teach them live there. But since we are accommodating and we're doing the best we can, this is the best, this is, this is, I'm super grateful that we're continuing what we can do this way. We were already doing this kind of stuff. This is, this is not new, this, these webinars like this. This was just like a, hey, let's do these once a month. And now we're doing them every week all the time. So what you need for a safe place, these are just some ideas. A hula hoop, a desk, a pillow and bean bag. So this is, those things right there are things outside of the bed. So in your room, make a create a safe place. Your room is the most important place. Um, a stress bag, 
um, and assign mommies on a call. Make a sign so you have a safe place. Your five senses emotional bags are little bags that you can put five senses stuff in and, and that helps them feel like a safe place. Go get your bag. Do you know you can do the activities in it? You can squish Play Doh, you can have a piece of candy out of it because you're five senses. So that's just a little bit of that. So, emotionally, this is just something to refer to. The best thing to do with your balance of this, once again, how many times have I said it is record. So, record. So, first of all, it's recording physical sleep, second of all, it's recording your time, third of all, it's recording your emotion. So we've got to get a nice little notebook. And, and I'd really challenge to start here. If you're not recording your emotion, if you're not recording your sleep, we don't know where we're starting. And, and we just have to, and that helps un, mind dump. So if you're recording your emotion every day, one to 10, um, it's your primary or secondary emotion. So 10 to 30, 10 means for kids, 30 is adults. So it's like, what am I feeling mentally and physically? And then here's my emotion. And then I'm going to rate it one to 10. So 10 is a very strong emotion is how I, to explain this slide a little bit. So you record them daily. And I do this with my teens a lot. I suggest that they do this because I, they, they, it helps them so much know what's going on. And then they can report to me a little bit of like, wow, I had like three days where I was just numb. I was blah. And I'm like, I get it. Don't have to say anything else. They were blah. So it's an emotion. Experience it. So this is the stimuli again, this little picture. Here's everything that we experience. We're taking it in. Don't block it. Don't shut your eyes. Don't stuff it or judge. Be a witness to it. Be present. Five senses. Don't shame. That's it. So is it, you know, that sounds simple, but to block that number one is to not block it and judge. That's super tough because we're supposed to not have emotion that makes us sad or we're not supposed to be angry. No, those are all good things. The last one, no shame. All emotions are signs. So all emotions just give us signs. They tell our body something, and then we can record what our body's feeling. So burnout, screen burnout. I'm just going to go over one quick thing on here. Um, this is why it's happening. So if, for the adults here, um, and our kids are hopefully you know done with school and they don't have to do this much, but at the same time, they're still doing screen time a lot. And I've had lots of parents go, I this gaming stuff and screen time stuff is a nightmare. So during an in-person conversation, our brain focuses on words. When we're on the screen and we're having Zoom, especially multiple people in the, in the meeting, um, we have to focus so much harder on the nonverbal clues. Um, and so what happens is our brain are, is doing so much more work. This is scientific of why we're burned out. It's habitual. This will call, go into habitual burnout because our 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 eye steam, our brain is like it almost feels like our brain's just um, overloaded. It's because we're doing Zoom instead of in person. We have to be so much more attentive, um, and that's just a little side note there about burnout and communicating and humans. <laughs> so, yeah, um, here's the coping. So mindfulness, four square breathing, tracing, focus point, um, calling someone, your worry bag is the same thing as the other bags that I talked about. So your five senses, so your worry bag, your sad bag, your mad bag, your shame bag, your, your um, burnout bag, you know, you can call it whatever they want, or a happy bag. So there's some ideas of freemindfulness.org. Those are free downloads. Um, you focus on what's right in front of you. So this is the difference between burnout and presence. If we're burned out, chronic burnout, we have to get back present to the present. We do. And this is one way where we practice this every day to pull us out of burnout. Um, and then here's some tips. 
good distractions I talked about, creative activities I talked about, limit screen time I talked about, of course, increased humor, just laugh, the timer's your boss, you gotta reach out, here's some crisis lines, some Utah Safe apps, um, you, you know, if you don't have that, your kiddo, uh, the teens, you know, use it quite a bit. It's just Utah Safe app. Um, they can text when they're feeling overwhelmed, stressed out. So what you do for yourself is logic and emotion together up here. That's your frontal lobes. You reduce caffeine and alcohol. Oh, by the way, I'm going to really quickly tell you about the myths because I didn't make a slide about it. I just wanted to talk about it. But here's the myths about sleep. Alcohol and pot. Teenagers and young adults have this really good myth about alcohol that it helps them sleep and pot that it helps them sleep. I started pot because I didn't sleep good. I always had insomnia. I've heard that hundreds of times. It's actually a hundred percent false because what pot does is it, it, it inhibits you from having REM sleep. You don't have REM sleep when you are on pot and alcohol does the opposite. It may help you fall asleep because it's a, it's a depressant. That's they're both depressants. So it, it, it may help you calm the muscles enough, but what it does is it actually produces a chemical and it's, um, I don't know how to say it, but what, but what happens after a few hours, it actually wakes you up. So alcohol will actually wake you up in the middle of the night um, more than anything else. It produces a chemical and in your body that actually wakes you up. So, and pot and, you know, THC, marijuana um, actually does not allow you to have REM sleep. So just so you know that, some myths. And you can't make up your sleep on the weekends. That's another myth. <laughs> so <laughs> clean up your environment, a reward system we talked about, little mini vacations. Those are just things that we can do in our head, uh, those mini vacations to bring us present again and to relieve um, stress. So, okay, time for questions and comments. So we have time for that. And here's some um, references. So we actually had one question, but you just answered it. So they said, if you make up on sleep, does this help or is this not good? Such as like on the weekend, sleep longer to make up hours missed during the week. Yeah, that's a myth. I just ended my PowerPoint. Um, that's a myth. So there's a, there's a, there was an article about, and I looked through the myths to kind of see what, you know, 65 and over need more sleep. That's a myth. Alcohol and pot help you go to sleep or stay asleep. That's a myth. And it, that you can make up sleep on the weekend. A lot of people think that we can make up our sleep on the weekend. It is absolutely a myth. The other thing is after 12 o'clock at night, you have to make up two hours. So say you stayed up till one. My teenagers right now are reporting, they're staying up till two, three, four, and five and six in the morning. I'm not kidding you. I have about 90% of my teenagers staying up until three, four in the morning. Now, is that COVID or is that just what they are doing now? I'm like, what? So everything after 12, so say you stay up to one, like I said, you need two hours of sleep to make up for that one hour. So it, 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 so sleeping on the weekend doesn't make it up because once again, you need that REM sleep. Remember those cycles that go together every night. So if you're not getting enough REM sleep during the week, you can't just make up all of your REM sleep in the, on the weekend. It's not going to work. Okay. And then this one's just a comment. So they said, I love Wayne Dyer's positive affirmations video on YouTube has helped me with my sleep and also helps me wake up more positive. Sweet. You know what? I just barely added that because I, I, he, okay, I'm going to the end of this. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Okay. I just need to go to the end. Um, so anyways, she's talking about, I, I put that in the reference, um, because it's just one thing, just look, you know, it's just one extra, it's just one particle <laughs> of all this, right? He, and so many people have talked about this, um, is that you, what you do in the last five minutes before you go to sleep. This one, Dr. Wayne's five minute before bed positive affirmations. Five minutes before you go to sleep. Um, so, so if you understand the unconscious and the subconscious, what you 
unconsciously are thinking about when you're sleeping has to do with what you do during the day. Um, so what you do the last five minutes in your conscious before you go unconscious, if that makes sense, is so important. So if we are watching the news, right, and we turn off the news and then fall asleep, sometimes I watch Seinfeld. You know, it's one of my favorite things. And I laugh. And I watch Seinfeld, and then I know that that's my 10, 30, or 11, and I turn it off. And then I go to sleep, and I'm out within 15 minutes all the time. Um, so, yeah, thanks for the comment, because I just added that. Because I. Okay. Oh, sorry, Carol. Yeah. Um, this one is, what do you recommend for first responders in sleep? My husband is a, a firefighter and 48-hour shifts and then four days off. Okay, so that's a tough one. That's a good question because we didn't bring that up of like when, so I have lots of doctors, first responders, um, you know, nurses and pediatrics, stuff like that that are on the, you know, different shifts. It is tough. Your body, I guarantee you are in chronic burnout when you are on a totally different sleep cycle all the time. So you have to combat it. That's all I can say. It's so difficult. So when people get back to regular um, sleep cycles on, you know, Monday through Friday or nine to five, and then they can sleep normal. I mean, do the best you can. His body, the, we do adjust, but you take those things. So it's not about night and day. It's about when you're sleeping. So you'll take your magnesium a half hour before you sleep. You do your regimen before you sleep. It's not morning and night anymore for you. So it's super difficult. I mean, our, it's not normal. It's not natural for our brain to not go to sleep with, when the sun goes down. So um, you do your best you can with that. And he's going to have to make that up when he's not working. So when you're on this 12-hour shift, like people do 12-hour, 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 or whatever, um, same thing with hospitals and doctors. I don't know if that was helpful. <laughs> it just sucks. It's difficult. Okay. That's the last question we had. So um, cool. thank everybody for being here. And um, I will send you this recording soon. And then uh, along with the presentation, Carol just did. So thank you guys. Hope you have a great rest of your week. Thanks, everybody.